In the other major decision, the Florida Supreme Court ruled Monday that an initiative to legalize recreational use of marijuana can appear on the state's ballot this November. The proposed amendment would allow people 21 years or older to possess up to three ounces of cannabis. The ganja could be sold through marijuana dispensaries without the need for a medical marijuana card. All right, so, uh, Daryl, uh, the, the governor is uh, calling both the marijuana amendment and the abortion amendment extreme and radical. What do you make of, of the decision by the court to allow this to be voted on by well, the Well, I'm not Florida there voters? with legalization of recreational marijuana. Why not? Because I am, first of all, I'm a person in long-term recovery, and I've seen the effects of a marijuana addiction on families, neighborhoods, and individuals having been in drug treatment facilities across this country. I'm also worried about the fact that 21 is not going to be the cutoff. It's not going to be the determining age that there'll be 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds who will be suffering from psychoses when they start smoking marijuana. I think that if we're going to legalize it, and the train may have left the station in this state, then we need to do about, we need to spend money on prevention, education, and treatment. And, and could the legislature, through taxing marijuana sales, make that happen? Well, I hope so. You know, I tried to get a 25% sales tax on crack pipes some years ago that failed. Uh. But certain, and the idea was to take the revenue and spend it on treatment, education, and prevention. So we've come full circle. Tara, and I'm going to push hard in the legislature. Tara, to the governor do that. says that these measures are radical and extreme. Uh, he, and he says, for instance, in the case of abortion, uh, we're going to have the same kind of laws that, that, uh, that California has. And he says that that's a bad thing. Well, first off, let's let the voters of Florida decide what's a good thing and what's a bad thing. But if, if you want to come to St. Pete, I'm pretty sure you're going to find that um, marijuana the, is already very much used and is a nonpartisan issue. We have Republicans and Democrats who are celebrating um, this on the ballot. But the one thing that I think that we do need to think about is that by um, decriminalizing recreational use, we're actually interrupting the pipeline to prison for a lot of individuals. I, I teach at St. Pete College. We have a lot of students that end up uh, derailing their lives with convictions and they have difficulty accessing the economy, accessing housing, and accessing the right to vote. And so, uh, although I absolutely understand um, Senator Roussan's concerns, I also think that there is another piece to this. And if I can keep more, you know, more of my students engaged in society and getting a good job and getting a good place to live by not being convicted of a, of a marijuana conviction, I think that's that's where I want to be. Mafei, what's your take on that? Well, my take is uh, closer to uh, the senator because I actually lived through that in Seattle. Uh, Seattle. Washington was the very first state that legalized marijuana in 2012. And at the time, I was a prosecutor. And we saw, I mean, if Florida residents or Floridians want to uh, approve this, that they better be ready to have more DUIs. They better be ready to have more traffic fatalities. Um, and they also need to give up the idea of having a clean and peaceful life outside. Because one of the things that I noticed in this uh, initiative, contrary to even California and Washington, is that it doesn't have any restriction for use outside in public. At least in Washington, not that it happens because people still smoke weed in the street, but here you don't even have that restriction. So get used to having the smell of marijuana everywhere. Get used to the idea that um, you can go to the beach and it's going to be smelling like marijuana when you're out in a nice restaurant outside. And it's also going to bring a lot of other crimes. And the other thing that I will add, from my own experience having lived in Seattle, after the legalization of marijuana, it just became the step up for decriminalizing the rest of the drugs. Mm. And and it's it's a I agree we need to have more prevention and we need to have education, we need to have treatment, but I just didn't see that happening. Steve, I want to get to the politics in a second, but just to Mafe's point, um, the legislature will implement this law so it can tell people where and how these things will occur if they pass, right? They can, and that's, that's dangerous, as we saw with Amendment 4, the amendment that, that, that restored voting rights to felons. Yes. Uh, the legislature, you get 100 people in a room reinterpreting and redefining what the voters intended. What I wanted to say about this is I, I agree with the comments by the panel that I do think the recreational marijuana amendment is a tougher sell with voters than abortion. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is. I think it's uh, 
for some of the arguments that have been made here. And it's an important and closely watched, will be a closely watched test of if Ron DeSantis thinks this is such a terrible idea, is he willing to go town to town, county by county, and tell voters, hey, you know, Ron DeSantis, like him or not, is far and away the best known politician in this state, and people will listen to DeSantis on an issue like this, I think. Oh, oh. I, I'm sorry, I, I disagree, Steve, okay. because we had the greatest portion of our electorate that is growing is the no party affiliate, the independents. I wish they voted. Hey, well, you know what? I think this is going to be a litmus test on their ability to get out the vote and also on where they are in front of freedoms and accessing the economy and these kind of criminalization or decriminalization and I think you're gonna find in November that this is gonna be a totally different kind of voter that comes out very very quickly even I, I respect what you're saying even without these two issues on the ballot in a presidential year like this you're gonna get a 75 to 80 percent turnout so the media and others have to sort of identify who are the voters who would who would otherwise sit this election out but who are going to vote now that abortion and marijuana are on the ballot. I'm, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced that that's a huge universe of voters. So we Maybe. must say today, <laughs> voters be engaged. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Steve, well, Democrat. Actually, one thing that I wanted, if you don't mind, one yeah. thing that I would like to follow up on what you were talking about with the interpretation and the voters is that this is also a problem with the amendment to the abortion because it just it's so broad right now the way that it's written is that to protect the patient's health and where is that where does that stop and i think that voters that think that this is just going to legalize abortion need to under i'm sorry yeah legalize abortion need to understand that this pretty much opens it up opens it up for any kind of abortion post you know like late abortion that, and that more is, importantly that's not and one more thing in other states though, and, and, and that's mis that's misleading the public and, and one more thing is that mm -hmm. This is going to open a lot of litigation for interpreting what is the patient's health, and it's mm -hmm. just going to be ongoing litigation. As a lawyer to a lawyer, there's case law on that, and there's and there's precedent on viability at 24 weeks. And I think that Steve, though, is is the most correct about going back. And what we really need to be watching is not that it's not going to pass. I think both of these are going to pass. It's what does the legislature do in the next session? How do they define viability? How do they define health care provider? How do they change the criminalization of the decriminalization? That's what they did with the felon disenfranchisement. And but it's it's not appropriate to tell the public that access to health care should be interfered with because it's too vague. Steve, I want to ask you about turnout. Will this draw, will these two issues draw more young people out to vote? Will it make Joe Biden competitive in the state of Florida? And will it turn around Florida's reputation as being a, a solid red state? I, I think there's that potential is there. I, I, I don't see this as a surefire a thing to change the state overnight from a red state to a purple state. Um, you know, uh, that would be a good thing, in my opinion, uh, for the future of the state. But um, it's it's yet to be proven. Um, I thought a lot of us thought in 2018 the amendment four, the the other amendment four to to restore voting rights to felons was going to be a turnout driver. That's the year that Rick Scott knocked Bill Nelson out of the United States Senate. In 2020, we had a minimum wage initiative on the ballot. I thought that that might really be a, a driver to 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 bring marginalized voters to the polls, young people, people working minimum wage jobs. It doesn't work in practice. I don't think it works as effectively as we'd, we'd wish it would. And in 2020, Donald Trump won the state over Joe Biden by a few percentage but points. But we must keep hope alive. Sure. And we must tell people the importance of voting and encourage it, them to come out and do just that. If I can make one more quick point, because, uh, and that is this, we haven't touched on it. This shows the absolute importance that Florida has the citizens initiative, that there's the opportunity for interest groups and citizens to sign those 1.4 million petitions and get this on the ballot. The legislature wouldn't have put these issues on the ballot in a hundred years, okay? So the only path left, what is, what is known as direct democracy, is here. And they had so many obstacles in their path and they still got it on the ballot.